Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this one, we're looking at the SteelSeries Apex M800 gaming keyboard. This features two processors and their own QS1 switches, which brings us a key with a much lower actuation force and less throw. More on that further in the video. You've got other things such as a full N key rollover, and you can also remap every key. There's also six macro buttons on the left hand side as well to make your life a lot easier when you're gaming. You've got full RGB lighting as well, which is configurable within the SteelSeries Engine 3 software. Built-in media keys, which are easily controllable with the function button at the bottom of the keyboard. It's even got a built-in USB hub, and then we'll cover the rest of the stuff as we go throughout the video. So included in the box, we've got some quite cool things actually. We have extra key caps if you want to use this on a Mac. You can easily change out the Command and Alt keys, which is nice to see. You don't generally see this with a keyboard. Then we've also got these what look like rubber domes. These are used to adjust the height of the keyboard when it's on your desk rather than the standard clips. More on that later. And then we've got the instruction manual as well as some SteelSeries stickers. So onto the main article, the keyboard itself. There's a few things that some people definitely see they don't like about this, but a lot of other things I think are pretty cool that will appeal to everyone. Now in the right hand side of the keyboard, we've got the SteelSeries logo. This does illuminate in whatever color you so wish. Currently rocking one of my presets that I've set up just a simple fade in and out after 60 seconds. When you're actually typing, it stays static, which is pretty cool. And here we have the function keys. These are accessible by pressing this Steel Series logo key that's just below on the keyboard. Gives you quick access to all the things you need for multimedia. Also brightness controls on there, which is a nice little addition. On the left hand side, we've got the six macro keys. Now it's quite controversial that some gamers say they need more than that. It's going to be very much a personal opinion if this is suitable for you or not. And some may say that having more than six will just be difficult to reach during the game anyway. Now this is the feature that I said about is a bit, maybe a bit controversial for some people, is the size of the space bar. It's practically double width of a standard one. This does mean you can catch it with your thumb really easily. You're not going to miss key presses with it. So that's, I suppose that's one benefit. But to some, it does look quite bulky. Personally for me, I'm not really fussed if it's bigger or not. When I'm gaming, I never look at the keyboard anyway, so it's only really when I'm typing that it will make a difference. This is one design aesthetic I really love. This is the side of the keyboard that actually is illuminated to match whatever is on the SteelSeries logo. All configurable in the software, of course, and I think it just adds a nice little bit of extra something that we don't generally see with keyboards. You may have LEDs that kind of extend around the key on the side of the keyboard, but no kind of dedicated lights in the keyboard sides. And I do really like this, just makes it look a little bit extra special. I also need to point out that the fact you're seeing a little bit of flicker on the video is not true of what you'll see in actual person. It's just where the refresh rate on the camera doesn't quite match the speed of the LEDs. Sometimes I have trouble with it, sometimes I don't. In this case, unfortunately, there is that little flicker. On the back of the keyboard, we've got a fixed braided cable. Personally, I'd like to see a removable one just in case it were to get damaged, it's easier to replace. Then you've got the USB hub. These are just standard USB 2 ports. You have the thicker cable that goes and powers the keyboard, provides you all the macros and the LEDs. And then the additional USB on the loop is just for the hub. So if you don't want to use it, you just don't need to plug it in. It's really that simple. Now, because I'm always switching up my keyboard, I don't tend to put USB dongles in, so I wouldn't use it. But of course, that's down to you. So on the bottom of the keyboard, we've got four rubber feet to make sure it stays put on the desk. Act as the adjustments for the keyboard. Easily pop them out and then put the other size in so you can adjust it to your own personal preference. Personally for me, I stuck at the lower height as it did get a bit uncomfortable with it higher up. So now looking under the keyboard at the QS1 switch. These have a 3mm throw depth, a 1.5mm actuation and only require 45 centinewtons of force. Now translated into English, that means they've got a very low pressure to activate the key. So you can type on this extremely quickly once you get used to it. And where the keys are kind of half size, it gives a bit more of a laptop-esque feel but with the mechanical element that you're used to from other keyboards that have switches such as the Cherry Reds. Now, as usual with RGB products, I like to give a little mention on how the white comes out. This is actually one of the better examples of white on an RGB keyboard, even though you can't really see it on the camera. It does use the three elements to produce that white, and this one definitely has an accurate white. It's not tinted like some others you see. Some you get them a little bit too blue or sometimes even green. This is definitely a very pleasing eye white. Now for all you guys that like to hear how a keyboard sounds, this is for you.
The one thing that stands out for me is the space bar. Just where it's bigger, it does produce quite a hefty clonk every time it's pressed. But when you get used to it, you don't really notice it as much. So this is the Steel Series Engine 3. You can adjust all of your Steel Series peripherals all in one bit of software. It's really quite cool. This is all the macros and things for each of the keys. You can literally do anything. This is going to be very popular also for video editors, I found. Adding the CV io controls on each key just makes things a little bit easier people that use photoshop as well may find this beneficial but you can literally go in and do anything you can do mouse clicks with it as well so if you want to spam your keys you could just by pressing a button literally you could be in here for hours just getting your own macros down to you know kind of exactly how you want them so i'm just whizzing through these to give you an idea of what you can do this is definitely something you need to invest time into setting up because I want to get this video in a relatively decent time, I am speeding this video up as you can tell. If you want to look at it in slow motion and just change the speed on the video itself, then you can see in a bit more depth. But I just wanted to give you a quick idea of what you could do. Now in terms of lighting, you have got presets down the side which are nice to go through. I found a disco mode one, you'll see that in a minute, that's my personal favourite. But this is first the FPS layout and I'm literally going to go through them in order just so you can see how they look. Now it's one thing showing you on the software but I thought I'd add in the camera of it in person. It just looks so much better than the software and obviously you can't really tell the effects. I thought I'd kind of pile it into one video that's synced together rather than doing them separately on this occasion. Now some don't actually animate on the software themselves so obviously that's another reason that I put the IRL camera so to speak in there. But it is very bright actually. The wave on this keyboard is one of the better ones I've seen. Definitely looks very nice and smooth. The flicker from the camera is a bit of a shame because it doesn't represent the keyboard as best as it could but as I said that doesn't appear in person. Now apart from the presets you have got the options to obviously customise this in its entirety. So first of all I'm just going to pick a few different parts of the keyboard to change. You've got drag boxes you can just blank things out you can totally erase them so they don't light at all. So if there are certain bits you don't like to light up maybe the Steel Series logo some people may not want that to light up you can easily cut that off. As I mentioned, when you do the Steel Series logo lighting, that will change the colours on the side as well. So for me, when I'm just doing my stuff day to day, I'll put that white because it makes a nice little effect on the sides. So here I'm just going through and adding some colour to the numerical keys along the top. And then as I'm doing the Steel Series logo, that will do the sides as well. But the disco effect's pretty cool, just adding a little bit of customization to show what you can do with it really. You can literally and you can layer these things as well and you can layer these effects as well so you can have some that are animated some that aren't it is the sky's the limit with these things or just to your own creative ability so now just rubbing these out to show you just what you can do so there you go you can do that if you wish and then you've got a whole blank canvas to start with so here i'm just making the whole keyboard red and then everything apart from the macro keys and then the steel series logo i made white that way you've got the red size on the keyboard as well to give a bit of contrast. Then once you've gone over all of the customization for the main active section, you've then got the idle section as well. So you can set a certain period of time and then you can add some different effects. So you may want it to wave after a minute when you're not using it. And as I mentioned in the start of the video, after 60 seconds for me, I just had the same effect, but had it fade in and out. So as you can see, alongside the macros and all those settings, there is a lot to go on with the lighting as well. So it's very much a have a play about to your heart's content with it. Okay, so we've covered everything about the keyboard pretty much inside out. Now it's time to just give you my thoughts. Initially, it did take me a little while to get used to these keys, but I was going from the clicky keys that are on the Razer keyboard. So it's quite a transition going to these as they're very soft and they don't take very much to actually register the press of the key. If you're going from a Cherry MX Red, you're going to get on with this absolutely fine. Just got a smaller actuation point than the Cherry keys. One thing you might find, which I did, is I actually did a lot of mispresses from keys. I think this is where the key register is so high at the top, even if you just roll your finger onto another, it can register. That's just down to practice, and eventually you'll get used to typing with the actuation point, and you won't make so many mistakes. In terms of how it feels, it's very, very difficult to explain. I think the easiest way to say it would be to imagine a membrane keyboard, like a standard traditional keyboard, but just with a lighter press. I think that's probably the best way you can say it. It's very different. It's a very unique switch as well. You know, very difficult to explain unless you actually type on it yourself. And you could perceive what I've just said as a bit of a negative impact to the keyboard, 
but I do honestly think after you do get used to it, you do gradually start to increase how you perform in your games, especially if you need to crouch quickly or something. It just takes a little tap, which can be an advantage in your general gameplay. The things I do like are the sides of the keyboard to add that little bit of visual aesthetic. The hub can be useful for some people, though I did mention it's not really particularly for me. The space bar could be up your street, it may not be. That's definitely down to your personal taste. I would like a removable cable as I did mention and I think a wrist rest would be beneficial as well. I'm used to keyboards that have wrist rests and uh, it just would be nice to have as a little extra addition. Very happy with the illumination although maybe custom downloadable profiles from end users would be a nice little addition to add into the gaming community. And then the white produced from the RGB again I am very happy with although that's a very picky thing that I always like to have a little look at. So if I were to give this a rating out of 10, I'd give it a solid 8.5. If there's anything else you want me to answer, then please do leave a comment down below. I know I've covered a lot in this video and it has started to drag on a little bit. So let's take to the comments below if you want any additional information answered. So thank you for watching this video, guys. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you want to get yourself one of these keyboards, I will put the relevant links down below. A big thank you goes to Steel Series for sending this out for me to review. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.